In this video, we are going to look at the JavaScript DOM. It stands for Document Object Model. Now, over the last couple videos, we've been looking at the main fundamentals of scripting languages. That includes creating output, using variables, control structures, loops, and functions. However, the DOM kind of takes a little detour from those concepts. The DOM and the concepts related to the DOM are a little unique to JavaScript on the client side. Now, the reason is when, when languages run on the server, like Python, MPHP, and Node.js, they don't typically have to worry about reacting to user clicks or manipulating the existing content on a web page. However, when JavaScript is running on the client side in the browser, it does have to handle those things, and it handles those things by using the DOM. So in this video, we're going to look at how do I manipulate the content on a web page using JavaScript. So we're going to do things like change the color, add some backgrounds, mostly manipulate style sheets. So let's get started. Let's create a new file, and let's just call it dom.html. And let's add our standard HTML tags. And a title. Now to make some examples of using JavaScript to manipulate the content on a web page, we need some basic content. So let's just throw in here a sample paragraph and a link. And throw in here a little shameless plug for my website. So when the browser loads this content, the DOM would include the document, the HTML tag is our root element. Inside the HTML element, we have the head and the body elements. Inside the head element, we have the title. And inside the body, we have an H1, a paragraph, and a link. Each of those three elements have text within them. And the link specifically has an href attribute with a value of my website URL. Now all that information would be in the DOM and we can reference and manipulate it. And anytime we manipulate the DOM, the website visuals will actually apply the same changes. So let's do an example here. So I'm gonna open up my script tag and there are a variety of referencing elements. You can reference an element by a tag name, by a class, by a, an ID, and, and there are some other options. One of the easiest methods is by using an ID. So I'm just gonna go through here and give each of our elements an ID. Now, in my JavaScript, if I want to change a CSS property of our heading, I'm going to create a variable. I'm just going to call it heading. And I am going to fetch or create a reference to our heading element. So I'm going to fetch or get an element using its ID, in this case, heading. Now, before we continue, let's just take a quick look at what is actually inside this variable. So if I do a console.log heading, right, and I'll save that and open up that file, open up my developer tools and the console tab, you can see that inside that variable is the HTML of the heading that I just retrieved. And now if I want to make a change to my heading, I take my heading variable, I can reference the styles, and specifically let's change the color to red. 
And now if I save that and refresh, notice first of all the visual heading is red. And if I look at my console.log message, it now has an inline style of red. Also notice when I hover over that, it's highlighted in my web page. So that variable is a reference to that element. Any changes I make to the element will reflect in the variable. Any changes I make to the variable will reflect in the element. Now, another method of referencing elements is by using classes, tag names, and a variety of others. However, unique to fetching an element by ID is that you are always retrieving one element. However, if I fetch an element by tag name, there's a potential that there could be more than one. So let's create a variable, call it paragraph. And I'm gonna, in my document, get element by tag name. And the tag name I want to fetch is paragraph. Now, before we manipulate any paragraphs, let's take a look at what is inside heading. Sorry, what is inside paragraph? So if I go back to my page and refresh, my paragraph variable is quite a bit different than my heading variable. Because there is the potential of more than one element, it creates what's called an HTML collection. And if I open that up, the main piece here is zero. So in my paragraph variable, item zero is a reference to my first paragraph. If I add a second paragraph, and we'll fix the word sample while we're here, and we'll change the ID to paragraph two, and now if I save and refresh, notice we have an HTML collection with our first paragraph and our second paragraph. So if I wanted to change the color of all of these paragraphs, I would now have to loop through that HTML collection and change the color of each of those paragraphs. If I want to change the color of one of those paragraphs, I can take my paragraph variable I have to specify which element I'm referring to. So let's refer to element zero. And now I can continue on like I did, change the color to blue. And now that will change the color of my first paragraph to blue. And lastly, if I want to change something like a background color. So let's just add a div in here give it the ID of div, and I'm gonna throw an inline style, and give it a height of 20 pixels, just so we can actually see this div. If I want to change the background color of that div, so first I'm gonna create a variable, I'll call it div, and in my document, I'm going to get the element using the ID. My ID is div, and I want to change the background color. So I'm gonna say div.style. Now, when you're using the background color style, it would look like this. However, property names cannot have a dash. So I need to convert it from dashes to camel case. So background color equals, and we'll change it to purple. And if I save and refresh that, we now have a purple div. So this is a couple base examples of using the DOM to manipulate the content on a web page. What a practical example might look like is when you're filling out a contact form and you click submit and you have some error messages, you would use code similar to this to take error messages, place them underneath the text boxes or form elements that have problems, you would prevent the form from submitting so that the visitor has a chance to fix those errors, and you can do things like put the cursor in the first text box that has an error so they can start fixing things. And all of that would be using code similar to this where you're manipulating the DOM. In the next video, we're gonna connect 
manipulating the DOM, like the example code here, and connect that with events. So instead of changing the color of headings and paragraphs when the page loads, we're going to connect those changes to mouseovers and clicks and many other possible events that can happen on a web page.